I think by now you've guessed that I love being outside in nature. It makes me feel re-energized and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about in this tip today. Re-energizing your love for music. You would not believe how many musicians that I've worked with in the past three decades that just fell out of love with music. They forgot why they were singing, why they were playing guitar, why they were playing keyboard. And it's not so much that they lost the love, they just lost their focus. They had too much to do with work, they were raising kids, they were going to school, they were arguing with bandmates. So I wanna show you a quick way to start getting back on point. And I'm pulling this from my book, Mind Over Music. If you haven't read it, check it out because it goes much deeper than this. We also talk about it in my online school. We give a course on this. So let me put on my dork glasses and just talk about your life playlist. So first of all, what is your life playlist? Well, I got mine here. And this is a list of songs that have inspired you throughout your entire life. Somewhere along the lines, from the beginning until now, there were certain songs that you connected with. You have a memory attached to them. They were important to you. And I think that is where we start to find our way back to our love for music. Now, you may still love music right now, but what if you want a deeper appreciation? I suggest anyone who's a singer, musician, keyboard player, guitar player, whatever, you do this exercise and this tip. <clears throat> so what I noticed is in my youth, I had a lot more of these songs. I'm just going to start listing some off from my list. So from the ages of 3 and 12, and this is what you want to write in a document. It can be on your phone, in a uh, notebook, whatever you want to do. You want to start with that first song you remember. For me, it was Jailhouse Rock. I remember running through my grandmother's house. I had my socks on. Came through the kitchen, around the corner. She had on the record player, and Elvis Presley was playing. I slid on my socks up to that record player. I cannot believe I did not knock it over because I was hypnotized by the voice of Elvis Presley. It pulled me in, that raw emotion that he had. And from that moment, at three years old, I was hooked. And as I'm going through, just looking randomly, A Greatest American Hero. It was a great show in the 80s, and I remember uh, singing it in choir in 6th, 7th, 8th grade middle school. And it always pulled me in. Uh, Let's Pretend We're Married by Prince. This was around 13, and it's when I was starting to notice, really notice girls. And that song was like, shh, can't let mom know I'm listening to this because it was pretty provocative, but it was making me open my eyes to sexuality. Now, I know it's a young age, so I don't really mean sexuality, but I mean, you know, that attraction to another person. So that's when I became curious. Now, as I entered my teens, I started pretty strong with pop music. I mean, songs like Broken Wings by Mr. Mister, Jam On It by Nucleus, one of the first rap songs that I love. I still love it to this day. I taught it to my son. I taught it to my grandson. Jam On It. I love that. I really didn't get heavily into rock, uh, even though I, I knew songs by Def Leppard around the age of 12. I didn't really get into it to around 16, 17 when I joined this band called Flint. And I joined as a keyboard player not a singer, and I remember we were playing Moni Moni, and I raised my hand in rehearsal and said, can I sing that song? And Donnie, the guitarist, laughed. He's like, James, you're not in school. <clears throat> you don't have to raise your hand. Yeah, give it a try. So I sang it, played the keys, and everybody got silent. And the rhythm guitar player, Billy Massey, said, uh, dude, you've been holding out on us. And boom, there was the start of my rock singing career. I, I fell in love with Bullet Boys, with Smooth Up Enya, with Cinderella, Love Tom Kiefer, Ray West from Spread Eagle, Steelheart. All these bands grabbed me. Now, I had tons of songs in my teens. Uh, Hysteria, of course. You Give Love a Bad Name. Uh, Get It On by Kingdom Come. <clears throat> Freight Train by Nitro. Can't forget Nitro. That's why I shatter glass. That was one of the eye-opening songs for me to want to sing high. It was Freight Train, followed by Vinnie Vincent Invasion, uh, the second album with Mark Slaughter. Love the first album too. Just didn't hear it first. Then I got into my 20s. Still had a lot of songs that pulled me in. Now, um, 
Molly Crew, I kind of liked him in the 80s. You know, I love Dr. Feelgood, but it wasn't until John Karabi was on the album that it really pulled me in. Hooligans Holiday pulled me in. That's the ticket. That's what pulled me into that band and actually got me started on wanting to sing Raspy. So there was other songs in my 20s. Uh, you Ought to Know by Alanis Morissette. Last Goodbye by Jeff Buckley. <clears throat> now, I love Prince growing up, but that reconnected me to wanting to sing in falsetto. Now, what I noticed... After I got out of my 20s, the songs, they came sporadically. They didn't grab me as much as they did in my teens and 20s where I had all these memories. But I remember like in my early 30s, there were songs like Do You Call My Name by Ra. And I love Sahaj Tegan. I love that voice. And I reached out to him. He's actually the first person to ever read my book, Raise Your Voice. I gave him a copy of it even before it was printed. So that memory is holding strong in my head. Judas Priest. I finally kind of got into them. I really wasn't into them heavily back in my teens or 20s but I remember playing with this band Purple Jester and Riding on the Wind they did Riding on the Wind and something about that song I connected with I loved 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 it Lip Spot Like Morphine uh, by Kill Hannah ironically uh, Matt Devine became my student <laughs> but I loved that song that was it wasn't really rock it was more pop rock but something about it really pulled me in hit my 40s up until now and I've seen the songs that really connect to me go downhill doesn't mean I don't still love music. I think it's that when we're so young and those hormones are going and we're full of life and vigor that we have stronger emotional connections to these songs. Doesn't mean you still don't have dozens of them in your 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s. This is just me. So uh, I can mention uh, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You by Led Zeppelin. Now, I loved Zeppelin way back in the day, but it's when I started playing it with my band Vendera. And uh, it's just that tone of that song connected to me. We did it for a TV show in Germany along with Friends, the song Friends by them. My Heart is Broken by Evanescence. Now I loved Evanescence when they came out in my 30s, but I think in my 40s is when I really connected with Amy Lee. And uh, Open Your Eyes by Alter Bridge. Loved it so much that we redid it as an acoustic version and changed it to a minor key, which you can check out on jamievendera.com slash about or on YouTube. I need you to make this song playlist. I want you to start from the ages of like early as you can remember. Mine was three and go to 12. Don't include your teenage years. Then I want you to do your teenage years, 13th and 19. Then I want you to do your 20s. And then I want you to do your 30s. Then I want you to do your 40s. If you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, you can kind of combine them if you're like me because that list gets a little smaller. But the point is, if you've gotten tired of music and you do the life playlist, you're going to remember. You're going to have some great memories that are going to pull you back into music and let you feel that connection again and remind you why you became a musician. So do this. This is a great tip. This is a great exercise. And I know it's going to inspire you to keep singing, to keep writing music, to keep performing.